Welcome. My name is G. You are watching all astrology. So I'm looking at a chart. <laughs> what else does G do? Looking at a chart. And I thought, what the hell? Let's just take a look at this chart together. Okay. So this is about, there's an upcoming uh, eclipse season. Yeah. The last of the eclipses for 2022. Okay. So the eclipses typically run in the signs that the nodes are in. And because we know where the nodes are, if you don't, I'll fill you in on that. Um, the north and the south node are in Taurus and Scorpio. So the way the nodes run, they always run in partnerships, right? Because uh, uh, astrology is holistic. It's just holistic, study of holistic energy, right? Uh, meaning all of it, not just a little part of it. So Scorpio is over here and Taurus is over here. So node, north node in Taurus, south node in Scorpio. Got it? So this is important for eclipses because when we know which node is where and we know where the eclipse is happening, all of this gives us detail. So the first thing we want to know is what the hell does the north node mean? What does the south node mean? And then when we know the signs that they're in, we'll talk a little bit about that because then we'll combine those meanings together. What does the North Node in Taurus mean? What does the South Node in Scorpio mean? And then we'll apply that information to the eclipse by knowing at what degree the eclipse occurs at. So if you're playing along at home or if you're watching along, however you want to put this at home, if you're following along, uh, even if you don't know a lot about astrology, um, if you want your own chart, just put something in the comments so I can get your chart to you so that when we do videos like this, you can follow along. You can have your chart and be like, oh, shit, this is this or or no. Woo. This is all cool. You know, this is going to be easy breezy. Um, and again, this isn't about doom and gloom. It's just simply understanding your energetic weather. Right. So I am going to take a quick peek at this chart while I'm babbling to you. OK, because what I want to do is. Um, Give for those who don't really care to see the chart, but they just want a general idea of, okay, what is this going to be about? We'll do that here. Okay. All right. So let's go to the date. The date of the eclipse is October 25th, 2022. Uh, it's 548, 548 AM. And that is central time zone, central daylight time zone. So just for where you live in the world. All right. Now eclipses, the reason we pay attention to eclipses is because things happen when eclipses occur, right? And so something significant, something will visually, you'll like, it'll be obvious. It'll be material and tangible. You'll see it in your life if you have something at these matching degrees at either end, Taurus or Scorpio, because we've got the nodes at either ends, okay? And the eclipse is so powerful in general that it affects the one end, and it shoots a beam of energy down to the opposite end, right? So this eclipse is a south node solar eclipse. Yeah, interesting. So it's a, it's a solar eclipse. So when we say solar, that means it involves the sun. But it, it's an eclipse. It involves the moon. So we're talking about the sun and the moon together. You follow? Well, if you know a little bit about astrology, you know that when the sun and the moon are together, that makes a new moon. So yes, this is a new moon solar, a new moon eclipse. Solar eclipse is a new moon. Okay. So whenever you hear someone say a solar eclipse, in your mind, it is a new moon. It's both. Okay. Now, because we have some other fascinating things happening, I'm looking at the chart as I'm speaking. Oh, let me give the degrees. I apologize. It happens at two degrees of Scorpio. So at two degrees of Scorpio, we've got the sun, we've got the moon, right? And remember, it's also what happens at the exact opposite. So Taurus, do you have anything at two degrees? And oddly enough, it's exactly two degrees. There's no minutes. It's two degrees and zero minutes. It's crazy. Stick around if you want to see the chart because there's one, two, three, four, uh, technically, Five other objects that are conjunct this. Conjunct meaning close enough to make a difference. Clo within orb, 
which is the degrees, how many degrees away, which is close enough to be a part of this energy. So I like to go through each of those items because they all matter, right? That's how we better understand what the hell this is going to be about. And uh, if anything, if astrology teaches anybody anything, it's how complex this crap is, right? Well, this makes sense in our lives, in our world. It, things are not just, you know, clear cut. They're not just this or this, right? I used to say left or right. I don't, won't use those words anymore. Uh, they aren't black and white, right? You can't, yeah, it's just, we are just so much more. It's so complex. There are so many shades of gray involved. And I don't even know if I should use that term. So before we go further, the new moons, it's a point of a, of a new beginning because it's the power of the sun and the moon. It's the power of the mother and the father. When the mother and the father get together, what happens? They have the ability to make a baby. Energetically, this exists. It has nothing to do with man or woman. It's that masculine feminine power, that masculine feminine energy. It's just there and it just is. Now, Scorpio has a, a really strong ability, strong creative power. It's co-rulerships, two planets, Mars and Pluto. So Mars is taking action, right? Mars is the warrior. Mars is, yeah, the one who can walk around with weapons, who has weapons, who's proficient with weapons, who was born to be a soldier. That is Mars. So we say that Mars is like these outbursts of energy. They're kind of unpredictable. You know, it's like the pit bull energy, zero to 10 in a, in a very short amount of time. Um, Mars likes to be first. And so if it's operating on a really high level, it's not considering just itself because Mars at its most primal state is all about me, 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 instead of we, we, we. Because that's, if it goes to the opposite of its energy, opposite of Mars, think Aries, Mars rules Aries. I know I'm talking about, about Scorpio right now, and we're going to tie that in. But to tie in, to talk about the selfishness, <laughs> the me, 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 the ego, the opposite of Aryan energy is Libra. And what is Libra? The diplomat. It's Venus. It's, but wait a minute, I want to make peace. I want to make sure this is fair, this is equal, that, that I'm doing something that's best for all involved, for the greater good, right? Diplomat, diplomacy. So getting back to Scorpio, if we go opposite of Scorpio, Mars, to Taurus, well, who's Taurus's ruler? Venus again, you see? It's about peace and beauty and goodness and the earth. Climate change, let's, let's, let's recognize you know, we need to take action and we need to to invest back into the earth, literally. Like, we need to look out for her, you know. Uh, so Venus, Taurus, love and money are also part of Taurus energy, okay? So Taurus, though, what's interesting about Taurus is it's, these are my values. I value these things. So opposite Scorpio, this is, yes, this is the part of astrology where shit gets complex, right? The opposite of Taurus, we go to that Scorpio. And so Scorpio is about our shared values, right? It's like, but this is ours. So it's somebody you're married to. It's usually deep bonds, soul bonds, blood bonds. Yeah, blood bonds. So that's why they say the sign of Scorpio inheritances like it's family money, old money, Pluto, old soul connections. The shit goes way back from, you know, whenever. So shared values, Scorpio, shared values. Now, Scorpio energy is also very powerful and intense. That's where that, you know, when you, when you speak to somebody and you, you can almost see the Scorpio energy in their eyes, you know, or in the way that they're expressing. You can almost feel that there's just this intensity to them. It's powerful. It's deep. And it's like something you just know, oh, my God, if there's ever a problem, that person needs to be on my team, not the other way around, right? Yeah, that's Scorpio energy. That's Pluto. Because it has the ability to kind of die. It's that phoenix rising energy. It has the ability to kind of just to appear to die, to die to its old ways, literally. It doesn't have to be to die to your physical life, but to absolutely die to your old ways and the whatever your life meant to you. What was it that you valued? What was the shared values? What were the what were the soul stories that were going on? Because this is this is a huge part of this. This is an ending to soul stories. And I'm saying ending, 
because it's a new moon in Scorpio. And what does Scorpio do? Scorpio energy is about releasing. It's about letting go. It's about, you know, if you ever known a Scorpio, typically they're all about these shared values, like what's yours is now mine type of thing. They get that magnetic ability like with Taurus, but they get it in their hands and it kind of goes pretty fast. <laughs> they find things to spend it on. Like I'm waiting. Where's that Scorpio where, where they've been able to, I don't know, like I, yeah, maybe I just have met different kinds, you know, but I've seen that in, but I've seen that pretty prominent where it's like it's, it's spent before they even got it, you know? And um, so, yeah, there's that thing about a release, a letting go. Absolutely. Sign of Scorpio, it might interest people to know, the sign of Scorpio is a key player when it comes to the tools and baby making. And so masculine energy, the tools and baby making, what are the tools in the physical body masculine energy needs to make a baby, right? You get what I'm saying when I say release, right? You get what I'm saying. Somehow the sperm is released, right? Yeah, release. So that just gives you just a little small visual, whether it's desired or not, <laughs> in another word, desire. Uh, the thing about Scorpio, I have to kind of mention this because I have somebody who, who recently started uh, dating somebody. And so they had some concerns just by things they recognized and saw. And they were like, okay, should I stay or should I go? <laughs> you know, like that song came in my head. And so I said, you know, let me take a look at their chart. And just from the little things they had told me, I was thinking, uh, I mean, I mean, I know what I felt like I should say at that moment. And I was like, you know, I, I probably should definitely look. There might be something, something that says this is going to work. Uh, and no, absolutely not. There's just a lot of things that angle in a really harsh way because it's very intense, powerful energy that's feeding off of largely its soul's memory. Yeah. And so it's got like this soul, you know, soul history going on, but it's not just its own. It's the shared soul history. So if you meet somebody, you know, you meet those people and there's, there's things that just click and you even feel like, God, I feel like I've known this person forever, right? Or, or, or we just understand each other. There's just this underlying resonating vibe happening. Scorpio energy, Pluto energy. Okay, so when we when we talk about that, we we can see how if the moon is there and the sun, and it's a new moon, and it's in the sign of Scorpio, which is a sign of releasing. So the other factor, when I speak of release, is that the South Node is in Scorpio. Remember I said this at the beginning, the South Node is in the sign of Scorpio right now. The South Node is all about letting go. It's all about I'm releasing. So if it's in the sign of Scorpio, we know that we are releasing shared values. Bam. Just like that. It's that simple. We are releasing shared values. So whether these are individuals you used to be intimate with, Scorpio, Individuals that you have blood bonds with, Scorpio. Individuals that you just feel like you had that soul history with, Scorpio. There is new soul stories that are going to be created. It's like we're elevating. It's the, it's again, I have it written down, the Phoenix rising. It's about reprioritizing. It's about, okay, I used to value that and we don't have the same values anymore. And so when you don't have those same values, underlying powerfully intense values that's what kept you together whether it was a friendship a romantic relationship a, a family type of thing going on how many people have you know aren't really in touch with their family anymore since 2020 began right i mean it's just like that's been what's been going on it's just like holy crap you know i would yeah i'm sorry i got the windows open it's a beautiful day um so yeah we we have all that going on and so it's a release, a release that's going to bring something new because it's a new moon beginning. So do you have something at two degrees of Scorpio? Do you have something at two degrees of Taurus? Now, it's not just the two degree mark. Do you have something within the two degree orb? So that would be zero degrees of Scorpio to four degrees of Scorpio, right? So I'm going to now take a time... Um, I'll call it my chart time to pull it up and take a peek at it because these are very complex times, folks. We have Mercury. Uh, let me see what I've written down in my notes here. Uh, the Mercury retrograde 
um, it, it, it will literally already be over by time this event begins. But because it was going through a sign that Venus rules, it was going through Virgo and Libra, I think it's important. So it'll be important because you will be able to connect those dots in your life. You follow what I'm saying? Venus, it's in Libra, significant one-on-one relationships, right? So yeah, it's tying it back to, to me talking about uh, Mars opposing Libra and energy, Mars opposing Venus, okay? So there's a lot of that, okay, are we still compatible? Uh, can we still make this work? Do we still have the shared values? Um, can we be fair and balanced within the relationship? Is there... Um, yeah, is there something that is just missing now, right? That like used to be there because it was a shared, a shared value that we had that we no longer have, whatever the hell that was for you, you know? So the other thing you want to do in your chart is look, when you look at these degrees, go to the house number that it's in. Say, okay, G, hit me up in the comments below, of course, but then say, G, I've got this. I've got something at zero. I'm looking and it says it's in my fifth house. What does that mean? Right. Seeing where the zero degree is or the one degree or the two degree or the three or the four, see what house number it's in. Right. And so when I pop the chart up, I'll, give, I'll show you that. And then that will tell you another, another, it'll just be more information. It'll say, well, this is the where this happens in my life. Okay. So below the video, I'll have all the degrees for those of you who like to pay attention to the degrees in your chart. Again, if you don't know and you want to know, just comment below.